One expert says coconut oil is a miracle food. The next says seed oils are incredibly harmful. Then butter is back. But isn't saturated fat supposed to be public enemy number one? For decades, fat has been the most confusing nutrient on our plates. What if the key to feeling more vibrant isn't about what you cut out, but how you cook? Stick around, and we'll scientifically rank every major fat in your kitchen, from the true superfoods you may want to include regularly, all the way down to the fats that are best used sparingly. By the end, you'll know which fats truly support your body, and which ones might be less aligned with your long-term wellness goals. We're ranking all the major fats and oils from F-tier to S-tier, starting with the ones that are less supportive of overall health, and working our way up to the most beneficial and nutrient-rich options. Cooking oils ranked by science, best to worst. Here's the full cooking oil ranking chart. This exact image is also available as a free download in the description. You can print it, fold it, and keep it in your wallet for quick reference when eating out or shopping. These rankings are based on current nutritional science, including how each fat impacts inflammation, cooking stability, heart health, and overall wellness. You'll learn which fats to limit, which ones are better in moderation, and which ones really help your body thrive. But first, we're breaking down what a fat actually is. You'll see in 30 seconds why the shape of a fat molecule changes everything. Welcome to Omni Healthy, your home for practical health solutions. If you find this kind of content helpful, hit that subscribe button. It really supports the channel and keeps these health tips coming your way. This video is packed with valuable health insights, so feel free to pause, take notes, or even re-watch it to get the most out of it. As always, consult your healthcare provider before making any changes to your diet or lifestyle. This channel aims to inform and empower you, drawing from research, experience, and passion for natural health. What you do with these insights is completely up to you and your personal wellness path. Let's get into it. Before we dive into the ranking, let's lay a quick, simple foundation. What is a fat, anyway? So, chemically speaking, the fats we eat are mostly triglycerides. If you can, just picture a tiny capital E. That vertical spine is called glycerol, and the three horizontal arms are what we call fatty acids. Now, it's really the shape of those arms that changes everything. Like whether a fat is a solid brick, like butter, or a flowing liquid, like oil, how it handles heat and most importantly, how it supports your body's vitality. There are three teams you need to know. First up, saturated fats. These fatty acids are straight and rigid, so they pack together tightly. You can think of them as perfectly straight Lego bricks. This structure makes them super stable, which is great for cooking. You'll find them in butter, coconut oil, and red meat. Second, monounsaturated fats, or muffers. These have one kink or bend in their structure, they're kind of like a Lego brick with a little curve, so they can't pack as tightly. That's why they're usually liquid at room temperature. Olive oil and avocados are loaded with these. And third, polyunsaturated fats, or poofers. These have multiple kinks and bends, making them wavy, fluid, and flexible. Think of them as tiny flexible chains. This flexibility is amazing for our cell membranes, but yeah, it also makes them chemically delicate and unstable. These include the famous omega-3s and omega-6s found in fish, flaxseed, and many common vegetable oils. Understanding this basic idea, straight and sturdy versus wavy and delicate, is the secret to knowing which fat to use and when. This is the key to unlocking more energy and promoting comfort in your body. All right, so let's rank these fats in a tier list, starting from the absolute bottom of the barrel. First up, we have the F tier. Down here, in a league of their own, we find industrially produced trans fats. These are widely considered among the most damaging fats to health based on decades of research. They're made by blasting a liquid vegetable oil with hydrogen to make it solid, shelf-stable, and cheap. Why are they so harmful? Because your body may struggle to process this highly unnatural structure. Research has shown that trans fats can disrupt your body's natural cholesterol balance. Specifically, they tend to raise LDL cholesterol, often called bad, and lower HDL cholesterol, the so-called good. That shift has been associated with a higher risk of cardiovascular issues. But here's where it gets more nuanced. LDL itself isn't inherently harmful. In fact, it plays an essential role in your health, carrying cholesterol from your liver to cells. 
where it's used to build hormones, strengthen cell membranes, and even help produce vitamin D. The real concern lies in the form of LDL. Ongoing research has highlighted that smaller, denser LDL particles are more likely to penetrate the artery wall and undergo oxidation, which can spark inflammation and contribute to plaque buildup. Trans fats appear to increase these small, dense LDL particles, tipping the balance in the wrong direction. This is why the World Health Organization has strongly advocated for the global removal of industrial trans fats. They've been consistently linked in studies to increased heart attack risk and premature death. Historically, they were common in margarines, fried fast foods, and packaged pastries. And while many countries, including the US and EU, have banned or tightly restricted them, some products still slip through. If you see partially hydrogenated oil on a food label, that's a red flag worth avoiding. Think of it this way, it's not just the amount of cholesterol that matters, it's the type and the balance. Next up, the D-tier. These fats that aren't acutely harmful, but their overuse in the modern diet is a real problem. This is where most generic vegetable oil blends, corn oil and soybean oil land, especially when used for high heat cooking. The problem here is twofold instability and imbalance. These oils are packed with polyunsaturated omega-6 fats. Now, omega-6 isn't evil, it's an essential fatty acid. The issue is that the modern diet has gone completely overboard, with omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, sometimes hitting a wild 20 to 1 or higher, when a healthier balance is closer to 4 to 1. Some research suggests this lopsided ratio can promote an inflammatory environment in the body. It's like a shouting match where the anti-inflammatory whispers of omega-3s can't be heard. But the bigger, more immediate problem is their delicate structure. Blasting these oils with high heat for frying or sautéing causes them to oxidize, creating nasty compounds that can damage your cells. Repeatedly reheating them, like in a restaurant deep fryer, is even worse. While recent science shows that the main omega-6 linoleic acid isn't inherently inflammatory, it's the sheer overwhelming amount we consume that's the issue, as it crowds out the beneficial anti-inflammatory omega-3s. For that reason, they land in D-tier. Enjoying this video? Go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends. Because honestly, sharing is caring, and it helps more people discover these helpful tips. Don't forget to click more in the description for product links, the cooking oil ranking chart and study sources we mentioned. Welcome to the most debated tier, home to fats with real benefits and real drawbacks. The king and queen of this category, coconut oil and butter. Let's talk coconut oil, nutrition's favorite frenemy. Here's the deal, it's over 80 to 90% saturated fat, which makes it very stable for high heat cooking. Some of these fats are MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, a quick source of energy. But here's the catch. Coconut oil has become one of the most hotly debated fats in nutrition. It's high in saturated fats, which are well known to raise both total cholesterol and LDL, often labeled the bad cholesterol, just like with trans fats. But here's where it gets interesting. It also raises HDL, the so-called good cholesterol. A 2020 meta-analysis of 16 clinical trials confirmed that coconut oil raises both LDL, bad, and HDL, good cholesterol compared to other vegetable oils. Some general research on saturated fats suggests they may shift LDL particles toward a larger, fluffier form, which is considered less likely to clog arteries. However, there's no direct evidence that coconut oil specifically causes this shift. Most clinical trials on coconut oil have not measured LDL particle size, so that claim remains speculative. That said, it's not a free pass. Coconut oil still raises LDL cholesterol in many people, and we simply don't have enough long-term data to guarantee its safety for everyone, especially when it comes to cardiovascular outcomes. So, is it an artery-clogging nightmare? Recent large-scale reviews suggest that while coconut oil does raise LDL, there's no strong evidence linking it directly to heart attacks. One 2025 review even concluded that avoiding coconut oil solely for heart health may not be justified. Instead, the risk may depend on what fats coconut oil is replacing in your diet. Swapping out trans fats for coconut oil? That's a step in the right direction. Replacing olive oil with coconut oil? Likely a downgrade. Another randomized trial from 2018 found coconut oil significantly increased HDL, but didn't raise LDL in the short term though the study lasted only four weeks. Because of its LDL-raising effect and ongoing debate, coconut oil earns its place here in the use with nuance category. 
It's a stable, high heat cooking oil. But don't go adding spoonfuls to your coffee just yet. The same logic applies to butter. Butter is also high in saturated fat, and yes, it can raise LDL cholesterol. But, just like coconut oil, context is key. There's growing debate over how strongly saturated fat actually links to heart disease. Some studies suggest butter may increase larger LDL particles, which may be less atherogenic than small, dense ones. In fact, small, dense LDL, pattern B, is associated with a threefold higher heart attack risk than large, fluffy LDL, pattern A. But large LDL particles can still contribute to plaque buildup. It's just a slower, less aggressive risk. Bottom line? Both coconut oil and butter can be used safely in moderation, especially when balanced by an overall diet rich in fiber, unsaturated fats, and whole foods. They're great for stability and flavor, but neither deserves demonization or glorification. Use with nuance, not fear. On to the B tier. Now we're talking. These are the fats that should be the reliable workhorses of your kitchen. First up is avocado oil. With a ridiculously high smoke point, around 520 degrees Fahrenheit or 271 degrees Celsius, and a neutral flavor, it's one of the undisputed champs for high heat cooking. If you need to get a beautiful sear on food without smoking out your kitchen, this is your go-to. It's mostly made of the same heart-healthy, monounsaturated fat found in olive oil, making it a fantastic and stable choice for searing, roasting, and frying. Also in this tier are high oleic sunflower and safflower oils. The key words are high oleic. That means these oils have been specially bred to be high in oleic acid, a heart-friendly monounsaturated fat similar to what's found in olive oil. High oleic versions are more stable, less inflammatory, and ideal for high heat cooking. But here's the catch. Not all sunflower and safflower oils are created equal. There are actually three types, and the difference really matters. High linoleic, around 70% omega-6, highly processed and pro-inflammatory. Mid-oleic, a blend, better but still moderate in omega-6. High oleic, about 75-85% oleic acid, the safest and most stable option. The takeaway? If you're using sunflower or safflower oil, only go for the high oleic version. And even then, oils like olive, avocado or grass-fed animal fats still offer more nutrients and anti-inflammatory benefits overall. Peanut oil also earns a spot here as a good, affordable option for medium to high heat cooking, thanks to its high monounsaturated fat content. A tier. This tier is for fats that don't just cook your food. They actively help make you healthier. The undisputed champion here is extra virgin olive oil, or EVU. It's the liquid gold of the Mediterranean diet, which is honestly one of the most well-researched dietary patterns for a long and healthy life. Evu is rich in monounsaturated fat, but its real superpower is its incredible antioxidant and polyphenol content. Compounds like oleocanthal act as a natural anti-inflammatory, working in a way that's even been compared to ibuprofen. Dozens of studies link high Evo consumption to a lower risk of heart disease, neurodegenerative diseases, and even some cancers. Its effect on LDL cholesterol is more about protecting it from oxidative damage than lowering the number itself. For maximum benefits, use it for raw applications like dressings or finishing a dish. For cooking, it's great for sautéing at medium temperatures to protect those precious powerhouse polyphenols. Also, in A-tier whole food fats from nuts, seeds and avocados. When you eat the whole food, you get the healthy fats plus a team of fiber, vitamins and minerals all working together. It's honestly like a perfect nutrient stack designed by nature. And at the absolute pinnacle, we have the S tier, fats so powerfully beneficial they're almost like medicine. This tier belongs to omega-3 fatty acids, specifically from marine sources. Fats from fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, herring and sardines are bursting with the long-chain omega-3s, EPA and DHA. These are nature's most potent anti-inflammatory agents. They're absolutely critical for brain health, heart health and keeping your body's inflammatory response in check. This is why getting enough omega-3s is so important. They provide the calm down signal to balance out the other signals in your body. For those who don't eat fish, a high quality algal oil supplement is a fantastic direct source of EPA and DHA. Plant-based omega-3s from flaxseed and walnuts are also great, but the body isn't very efficient at converting them into the most powerful forms. Because these oils are extremely delicate, they should never be heated. 
Keep them in the fridge and add them to smoothies or dressings. So let's recap the final ranking. In F tier, the least healthy, we have industrial trans fats. In D tier, the overused and unstable seed oils. In C tier, the controversial but useful saturated fats like butter and coconut oil. In B tier, our solid cooking staples like avocado oil. In A tier, the antioxidant-packed superstar, extra virgin olive oil. And S tier, at the very top, the powerfully anti-inflammatory omega-3s from fatty fish. Learn something new today? Drop a comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And for a more deep dive into your health, check out my channel for more videos. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss our next video. And remember this final takeaway, choosing the right fat for the job might be the single biggest upgrade you can make for your health. Remember, your health is your wealth. Stay healthy, stay sharp, stay omni-healthy.